Hi, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I am going to show you how I applicate a crochet chain onto a crocheted headband to create a fun design, such as the one shown here in the spliced genie headband. I'm not very confident with my embroidery skills, but it was pretty easy for me to make a crochet chain and then use a needle and thread to sew it to the to the headband. I found that I was able to get the placement that I wanted much easier than if I tried to do a chain applique stitch directly onto the headband base. I plan to use the resistor knit hat and headband pattern by Heidi at Craftimism as inspiration for the design that I am going to applique today in this tutorial. The best part about this applique technique is that you can apply these crochet chains onto anything you can sew with. Um, you can use a crochet background, you can use a knit background, or even a woven background like the blanket I have on my table. Today I will be using worsted weight yarn. This is Knit Picks Comfy Worsted in two different colors. A size H 5mm crochet hook. A tapestry needle for weaving in any loose ends, and a sewing needle and thread to actually apply the crochet chain to the headband base. I like to try to use thread that is as matching as I can get to the contrasting yarn color, but the stitches end up being so invisible within the yarn that that isn't uh, too important. Sewing pins will help make the project easier because we can lay out the design of the applique before we start sewing. We have a flat headband base that is 20 inches long. At the end of the applique, we will then secure the edges together, but it is easier to lay out the whole design when you can have the, the, what you're appliqueing onto completely flat. So this flat headband piece is 20 inches long and I have 48 inches of a crochet chain ready to go. This is the resistor design that I hope to recreate on the headband. The trickiest part of the design is going to be this edge right here because we've got some negative space and so we'll be going behind the headband in those spots. So I am going to start at this end and then work my way down. With the Genie DNA pattern, I would start by laying the chain out totally on top of the pattern before doing any pinning, um, but this time I am going to go straight to pinning one end of the crochet down at the edge of my headband. And I'm going to insert the other end of the crochet chain into a tapestry needle as much as I can so that way I can weave it through uh, so I can weave it through the headband. I'm going to insert my needle into a, a hole. Um, it doesn't matter exactly where you put it, I just want to make sure that I'm not trying to go through one of the stitches itself. We want to make sure not to twist, and I am going to pin this right here so it will stay put. All right, now I'm going to come up through this hole and make one of these vertical lines, making sure to twist. Oops twist my crochet chain so that way the V's are what is visible. I'm trying to make, there we go, this line be equidistant on either edge. So since the last place that my needle went was in the bottom, I'm going to start at the bottom of the next bar. 
and rotate this as needed so that way I see my V's and go back in this side up here. So when we're actually sewing these chains in place to make the design, um, at that point I would you know, I try to sew through any of the stitches that I can, but at this point, I just want to be able to pull this chain through easily. So there, the bumps are showing, so I'm going to rotate it over. And this can all be adjusted. You notice that I haven't pinned these ones down yet. <clears throat> I just haven't bothered. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're not pulling anything too tight. Here's the wrong side because you don't want uh, you don't want to make the headband gap. down to about here. Okay, now I'm going to just try to there, lay that out. And then finally I'm going to come back up in the middle right here. And up, oh, see I went within a stitch and that's why I had trouble pulling through. So I want to make sure I'm coming up in between some stitches so I can pull this through really easily and rotate it so I see not the bumps but the, the V's and we are now complete with this first section of the resistor. I don't need the tapestry needle anymore at this point, so that's handy. And now I'm going to roughly lay out um, this zigzag portion. So I won't be able to get the sharp angles right now, but this is just mainly for placement so I know if I need to stretch things out at all. And look, I already started going in the wrong direction. So this is a rough layout. So down, up, down, up, down, up, and across. Okay, so I do not think that I would have space to fit three of these zigzag sections. So what I'm going to do, and as you see as I was laying it out, is I'm going to try to center these a bit more. So I am basically going to stretch this out. I'll scooch this into place. Is that about even? Okay, so this does not quite look like these zigzags yet. But that's because I've just laid it out and now I'm going to start pinning it into place a little more. But I just wanted to get the approximation of where each of these points should take place. And so now as I'm doing this, you might realize I might realize, oh, I need to adjust this further. Uh, Cuz you see I might be getting a little bit of slack, but I can just create the point and pay attention to the uh, this approximate placement. Oops. I'm going to make sure you go 
through both the chain and the background. And you want to avoid twisting the chain as you go. Doing this resistor is slightly more difficult than the Genie was just because um, I want to try to get points whereas before in the other one it was more rounded. And so as, as I sew these down I can make sure to keep this somewhat straight. Okay, so this one goes down. I've now pinned out this first zigzag and I will do the second one off camera but you get a sense of I je I've laid out generally what I wanted to do and then I'm pinning it down. You could skip pinning all together and just go straight to the sewing of the chain onto the headband but as you could see when I was adjusting the placement uh, that you might change your mind on where you want things to go so it's helpful to pin it out first before we start sewing. There we are all pinned in place. These points aren't quite as sharp as I would like them to be in the end but that's something that you can that I'm going to make sure to do as I am sewing down the chain. So we're securing the crochet down to the headband base using a needle, a sewing needle and thread. And I selected white thread because it shows up, basically doesn't show up at all against this pale blue. And we're doing a back stitch. So if I'm going this direction with the sewing, each time I go back a little bit and I'm doing this because versus a running stitch because a running stitch uh, isn't very flexible and we want the headband to be able to stretch. And as I get to the point I'm going to remove the needle and kind of reinforce my hands where I want this point to be. And doing back stitches turn and I'm just going to kind of hopefully reinforce this little point as I go I'm trying to remain in the center of the crochet chain where I'm putting the stitches but it's not as important because the sewing thread ends up being pretty invisible against the yarn. If you were doing this with a tapestry hook and matching yarn you would need to take more care to try to be within the center of the chain but I recommend using a sewing needle because it is easier um, you can go through the strand of the yarn to secure it um, and so I find that to be easier. I'm really happy with this overall technique because you get this really vibrant contrast on the design. So I want this to be my corner. I'm going to reinforce this edge and I'm approaching the end of the headband and I want to make sure that this straight away lines up yep with where I started on the other end so that placement is good it's always nice to double check the placement 
Remove the last pin. All right, we've sewn all the way onto the back edge. Next, I am going to sew these ends together and then we can secure the edges of our crochet chain. I stitched the seam up and now I am going to use my tapestry needle to weave these ends through. And I will weave in all use and loose ends on the back, but you'll see I'm going to weave this edge Pull this edge of the crochet chain through and I'm going to make sure to rotate it so it shows up the correct side. There! Now I still have my needle. I can stitch. It's closed. So that this lines up. And so just back stitch. I'm going to go over this a few times because I would like this to remain in place. And there we go. The edge of the headband is joined. I still have loose ends to weave in, but we have successfully appliqued a resistor design onto this headband. We used a crochet chain and a sewing needle and thread to create this cool design on a crochet background. But really, you could do this on anything that you can stick a sewing needle into. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you for watching my video.